Hello, Burley Glenwood boys and girls. Uh, welcome to area lesson 14.11. This is the last regular lesson of the topic. And then we're going to do some review before we take the math test. So I'm going to share my screen and I hope you have your digital common core up and ready to go. There we go. Okay, number one, which point on the number line best represents two fourths? So we want to think of um, a fraction that is equivalent to a half because two fourths is equal to a half. So you have to decide, is it gonna land between zero and one or is it gonna land between one and two? And hopefully you'll notice that this is a really good option right here. Hi, Shadow, you gonna come say hi? Okay, estimation. In 2005, there were 565 students in a town's elementary school. The dog does not like the cat. Okay, Chloe, stop barking at Shadow. Okay, maybe they're done. 323 students in the junior high school. Round to the nearest hundred, tell about how many students there were in all. So you'll notice over here it says show work. I'm gonna model what I want that to look like. So we're rounding to the nearest hundred. So five or above, give it a shove, four or below, let it go. So I would underline the five, arrow to the six, Six is above five, so I want to shove that to the next hundred. So that's gonna to round to 600. Now, 323, I would underline the three, arrow to the two, and that's that four or below, let it go. So that needs to round to 300. And then you're gonna add those, and I'm not gonna finish adding them for you, you can do that much. I'm just going to make my little text box bigger because that's annoying. Okay, number three, about how long is the paper clip? So we have centimeters, centimeters, inches, and inches. Hopefully there's two that you realize are no way Jose's because this ruler is showing us centimeters. So there's only two that you need to look at. The other two you can get rid of in your head. Now you'll notice that the paper clip, it's between the four and the five. They wanna know about, so that would be kind of like rounded up to the next um, unit. So I'm not gonna circle that one. I think you can look at that and get a pretty good idea. Okay, number four, Olga has 500 beads that she is using to make necklaces. She plans to use 20 beads for each necklace. How many beads will she have left after making nine necklaces? So I'm going to show some work. It says each necklace uses 20 beads. So 20. And then, then it says that she's making nine necklaces. So times nine equals, and you have to figure out what that's going to be. Now, whatever you get there, let me see if it'll let me highlight. Oh, yeah, it did. Whatever you get there, you are then going to subtract, whoopsie, I don't want the 500 to be highlighted. I'm going to unhighlight that in a second. So let me highlight that. Hello, don't be grumpy. So you're gonna take 500 and you're gonna take away whatever you got there. And then you will get an answer. So if you have scratch paper next to you, that would be a good spot to actually stack them and subtract them because you can't very well do the cross outs and the borrowing when you're doing it long ways like this. And then make sure you put 
your answer down here. So it's going to be some number, and then you're going to say beads. So it's going to be some number of beads. That's a big text box. Okay, number five, explain why all, oh, this one looks different than the one that was on a different quick check or CCR. Explain why all rectangles are parallelograms, but not all parallelograms are rectangles. So all, I'm gonna use the question in my answer. Rectangles are P-A-R-A-L-L-O-Grams because Come on, Mousy. So I'm going to do some typing and then I'm going to tell you what to go in those blanks. I'm going to copy paste because parallelograms is a really long word. And if you can't remember how to copy paste, you highlight it, then you do hold down the control button, keep it held down, touch the C button. And then to paste it, you hold down the control button and you hit the V as in Velcro. If you're using a Chromebook, remember you do the double finger tap. So now I'm going to talk about what needs to go in your blanks. And one strategy you could use is listen and then rewind it and pause at the particular points that you need to type in what goes in the blanks. So all rectangles are parallelograms because, if Chloe would be quiet, opposite sides are equal and parallel. Okay, so I told you what goes in those blanks. Now for the bottom part. Not all parallelograms are rectangles because rectangles have to have, you can either write 90 degree angles or you can call them right angles, R-I-G-H-T. And parallelograms do not. So, I'm going to show you, I'm going to insert um, a shape to show you what I mean. Okay, so here's a rectangle. And that rectangle is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal and parallel. However, if I come over to the shape tool, there it is. Okay, where's the slanted guy? There we go. Here's the slanted guy. So let me see if I can make it. Ooh, I can make it more dramatic. There we go. So we can clearly see that his opposite sides are equal and parallel, but he does not have a right angle there. That one's obtuse. And this guy is acute, but these guys are exactly 90 degrees. Okay. So I will be able to easily tell who watched the video based on, did you even answer this question and did you do it correctly? Okay. 
Let's go to the other one now. Okay, so hopefully you're pulling up your workspace now. Let me zoom in. I think today I might show the video first because I think that might make more sense. This might make more sense if we watch the video. So I'm going to pull up the video first. Where is the computer sound? There we go. How do you decide which tools to use when measuring area? Think about this question during the lesson. Which measurement unit and tool are the best choices for measuring the sides of a basketball court in order to find its area? Let's find out. Plan. A good measurement unit is usually smaller than the amount to be measured and large enough to make it easy to measure. Think about these measurement tools. Inch ruler, yardstick, centimeter ruler, meter stick. What standard units of length do the inch ruler and the yardstick measure? Hopefully you're thinking inches and yards. The inch ruler measures in inches and feet. The yardstick measures in feet and yards. There are three feet in one yard. What standard units of length do the centimeter ruler and the meter stick measure? Well, hopefully you're thinking, well, the centimeter ruler, that one's going to measure in centimeters. And the meter stick is going to measure meter, but it also has little centimeter markings on it. The centimeter ruler measures in millimeters and centimeters. The meter stick measures in centimeters and meters. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. Solve. Which customary and metric units would be the best to measure the area of a basketball court? Remember, when measuring area, you measure in square units. So think of Mr. T's gym. If we were, um, turn off my phone so we can hear it. We are going to go measure Mr. T's gym, and we have those little rulers in our hand that go from about here to about there. Would that be a good way to lay him across the floor? Or would it make more sense? Imagine the yardstick; they're really long. Would that go faster and be more efficient to measure the gym with? And then the same idea with the centimeter ruler. So on our inch ruler, on the other side of it is the centimeter markings. There's like 30 of them on a 12 inch ruler. Would that be a good way laying those across the floor in the gym? Or would it make way more sense to use the meter stick? Square inches or square centimeters could be used to measure the basketball court, but they are small compared to the size of the court. Square yards or square meters are larger and would be better to measure the basketball court. Which are the appropriate tools to use to measure the area of the basketball court? So hopefully after listening to that little hint, you thought, oh, so if I'm talking tools, I probably want the yardstick and I probably want the meter stick. The appropriate measurement tool would be a yardstick or a meter stick. Now you know how to decide which tools to use when measuring to find an area. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the workspace now. I'm going to zoom in because it's a little small. Let's go to 100%. 
says, what are three items you would measure using square inches or square centimeters? What are three items you would measure using square feet or square meters? What are three items you could measure using square miles or square kilometers? Explain your choices. So can be measured in square inches. Well, I'm looking around me and I have a cell phone. So I could type cell phone for both of them because cell phones are pretty small. So I'm going to put a cell phone down for both of those. I want you to look around your house and think of something small. It's not going to be huge. Something small that is, it needs to be square or a rectangle or, you know, nothing too huge. Now, across from me, my husband went to Costco a few years ago and bought himself a gigantic television. It like takes up a huge portion of the wall. And that's something that could be measured in square feet. So I'm gonna write large TV. Cause it is probably a yardstick tall. It is absolutely huge. I was not happy when he came home with it. Now look around your room or your house, is there something else that's really big that you're like, okay, that could be measured in square feet or in square meters. Um, next to me, I'm gonna turn the heater on a bunch of windows. So my tall windows. So my tall windows are something that could be measured in square feet or square meters. So if you have really tall windows in your house, that's something that you could put down. Another thing is, um, think of your parents' bed. If your parents have a queen, queen size or king size bed, you know, you could measure that in square feet. Okay, now square miles. That's big spaces. That's like the distance from Burley Glenwood to Albertsons in town. So things that are measured in square miles, that would be like the city, see, city of Port Orchard. Oh, you know what might make sense? Copy paste, control C, control V. So city of Port Orchard. So you could put down state of Washington. If you were to look up information on how, like how big is Kitsap County, it might tell you how many square miles Kitsap County is. So those are things, they wouldn't measure um, the area of Port Orchard in square feet. That doesn't make sense. Okay, on to our next slide. So what I did is I gave you words over here and then I gave you spots to put them. I'm gonna read the sample thing up here though. Oh, I don't know why I have the word type there. Okay, which measurement units would you choose to measure the areas of these items? So notebook, that's like our spiral that we would do our math in, in during the school year. And then move that, this is, this is the state of Wyoming, and it's probably close to the size of the state of Washington. So square feet or square meters are much larger than the notebook. Square inches or square centimeters are smaller than the notebook and would be better to measure the area of something small. Where are you going, Nana? Um, you can either go to Home Depot or Lowe's, either one. So you got the information in the pictures? I hope that's yes. Okay, state of Wyoming, square feet or square meters would be, could be used, but they are small compared to the size of the entire state of Wyoming. Square miles or square kilometers are larger and would be better to measure the area of something large. 
Okay, so I have my measurement units over here, and I have my measurement tools over here, and you can highlight them and copy paste them. So name the measurement unit, here we have measurement unit, you would use to measure the area of each item. So state of Florida, that would be like what they were saying over here for the state of Wyoming. So I am gonna highlight square miles, control C, control V, so square miles. Now an envelope, I don't have one sitting next to me, but it's a little bit bigger than a cell phone. It's a teeny bit longer and a little bit thicker. So if I wanna think about units, I'm probably either gonna go with square inches or square centimeters. And I think I'm just gonna go square centimeters this time. Because that way I can go back and forth between them. Okay, I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna paste that in there. Okay, now classroom floor. Well, we're not in our classroom right now, but you could think of your living room or your family room, the room where your TV is and there's a comfy couch. So what measurement tool, so here's tools now, I need to look over here, would I use to measure the area of each? Um, and I think if I'm doing, um, oh, Mrs. Scholes called me, I'll have to call her back. Um, if I'm measuring the floor in my house, I'd actually get um, a measuring tape out, but they don't have that. So I would go with, I think I'm gonna highlight both of them since they're next to each other. Either the yardstick or the measure um, meter stick. There we go. So for classroom floor, yardstick or meter stick. Now our textbook, Ooh, I'm gonna see if I can pause the video for a second. Cause I'm gonna go grab something. Pause recording. So I'm gonna hit pause. I hope it works cause I don't wanna have to start all over, but I'm gonna go grab something and I'll be right back. Hey boys and girls, I'm back. I wanted to go grab a um, inch ruler and if, I don't know if it'll show very well, but on one side it's inches and on the other side it's centimeters. So we're asked about a textbook cover. Well, I don't have a math book at home, but I do have, whoopsie, upside down, a story. So could I use my inch ruler to measure it? Could I use the centimeter side to measure it? I could. Now a yardstick is three times as long as this. I could use it, but it's not the best tool for the job. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna highlight those two, so control C, control V. I'm gonna stretch my box a little so it fits better. Hello, there we go, now they both fit. Number five, give an example of an area that you would measure in square feet. I'm gonna show you something real quick that I could measure in square feet. Ignore the mess. Okay, I'm just hoping you can see. So you didn't go far enough. Okay, see the dog bed? And that's Denozo on the dog bed. Okay, back to Mrs. Mears. Hopefully I didn't make you seasick there. So give an example of an area you would measure in square feet. So the large, it's a, it's a good size dog bed. We got it at Costco a few years ago. Dog bed. It is probably three feet by three feet. It's a big dog bed. Give an example of an area that you could measure in square meters. So square meters, a meter is a little bit bigger than three feet. So if I wanted to measure something big, like in square meters, it might be my garage. So I'm gonna write my garage. Ooh, I could also do my wood shop. I've got a building next to my house with um, tools and stuff in it. 
but um, that might be a good thing to measure in meters. So you have to think about what are places around your house. Maybe maybe you have a, some of you have goats and chickens. If your chicken coop is pretty good size, you might measure that in square meters. But if your chicken coop is little, it might be better to put in the square feet spot. Okay, gotta scroll up so we can see it. Give an example of a length you would measure in inches or feet. So this has to be something that's not super huge. I already, this is not quite a foot. I don't know that I'd wanna measure it in, oh, my dog. My dog's a good size. I could measure how long my dog is. I'm going to put his name. His name is Waylon. A lot of you heard me talk about him. Let me move the camera and you can see he's sitting on the couch right next to me. He's my helper. So the black splotch here. Waylon, can you say hi? Here's Waylon. He's keeping me company and helping me teach. And Rue's behind me in a crate because he'd rather eat the cats. Okay. Now on this one, we're number eight through 11. So remember some of you, if you stop after the half hour mark, this is your stopping point for the day. But if you're like, I just want to get it done, then keep going with me. So for eight through 11, we want the measurement and unit. We want these guys, which would you use to measure the area of each item? So soccer field. So if I'm measuring a soccer field. Think of our play field at Burley Glenwood. I'm not gonna measure it in square inches because they're only like, like, oh, let me see if I can do that funny little thing that people do with their hands. I'm not very good at it. Mm, okay, a square inch is like that big. It's little. Square feet, that would be more like this. Square yards, that would be the size of my dog, my dog bed, a whole bunch of dog beds. Square miles, that would be like from here to Albertsons. That's miles. So I don't think I would want little tiny inches or little tiny feet, but square yards might be a good one. So I'm gonna do that one. And if you're like, well, what would it be if I'm doing the metric system? It would be square meters. So control C. Hello, come back here, click, click. There we go, enter. So for the soccer field, it's square meter or square yards. A large lake. Um, if it's big enough, like Lake Erie or, um, I bet like Moses Lake in Eastern Washington, that one could be square miles. Um, I wonder how many square miles Long Lake is. That might be kind of interesting to look up. But if the lake is big enough, it could be square miles. So if your parents let you play on the internet, that might be something interesting to look up is um, Moses Lake. You could type in um, what is the area of Moses Lake or what is the area of Long Lake and Port Orchard and see what comes up. And if you find something interesting, you are welcome to message me in this assignment and let me know what you found. Okay, so cell phone. Do you think it would get measured in square inches, square feet, square yards, square miles, square centimeters, square meters, or square kilometers? So my phone, 
it's less than three inches going that way. And let's see. What's that a five? Yeah, a little bit bigger than five inches going that way. So I'm not going to be measuring it in feet or yards or miles. I want a small unit. So I'm going to copy square inches. Paste that in there. Make my box a little bigger. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab square centimeters. And I'm going to try to put it in there. There we go. And I gotta make my box bigger. Okay, bedroom wall. So, depending on your bedroom, um, I think on that one you're probably gonna either want to go with um, square feet, because on the side of paint cans, it tells you how many. Um, square foot coverage that they expect the paint to be able to do. I just painted the room that, well, not the kitchen, but I painted this other room gray last week. Okay, now they want to know the tool. So we're looking over here. What tool would we use? So our garage door. Garage doors are pretty big. Do you think you would use an inch ruler, centimeter ruler? Yard sticks, remember that's like three times as long as this, or meter stick. I think I would probably, personally, I'd get my measuring tape out, but they don't give us that option. I would use a yard stick. Okay, calculator. Now, calculators are close to the size of my cell phone, so I want something small. So I'm gonna go with the small ones, the inch ruler and the centimeter ruler. So control C, control V. I hope I hit record again, because that would really, am I recording? I hope I'm recording. Hmm, I'm screen sharing. There's nothing to say if I am recording. That could be bad. I hope I'm recording. Okay. Stretch that out. Now, think in our classroom what they're considering a whiteboard is more like our chalkboards. And in my room, I have it covered with construction paper because I don't use the chalkboard part of it anymore. Um, I know in Ms. Haddlestat's room, she has the chalkboard um, still accessible because I know she's written on it several times. So on that one, you're gonna use something larger. You, you're not gonna use one of these across the board. Um, so you'd want the meter stick or the yard stick. So Copy that and paste it there. Oopsie. Postage stamp. A lot of your families, they probably um, do their bills electronically, but if your parents have a pile where the mail goes, you could go look in the pile and see if you can find an envelope. And in the corner on the envelope, there's a little stamp. Sometimes it's just digitally printed on and other times it's like a sticker, but they are really small. So that's gonna probably get measured in, um, it might be one square inch, they're pretty little. So you wanna go with your smallest measuring tool. There we go. So what unit of measure for 16, so we are looking over here now, would you use to measure the area of a national park? So national parks, that's not like, um, I'm trying to think, that's not like Manchester State Park. It's even bigger. A national park would be like going to Mount Rainier or going to Mount St. Helens, or some people like to go camping over on the Olympic Peninsula. 
and there's like the whole rainforest. The, um, that's the whole rainforest is part of the Olympic National Park. And that's going to get measured in square miles. If we were in Europe, they would measure it in square kilometers because national parks are really big. Some of you might have been to Yellowstone or Yosemite. Um, when I was a kid, I went to whichever ones in California, but I've never been to the one that is in Montana or Wyoming, or wherever that is. My cat's being naughty in the other room. Okay, now for number 17, which measurement tool, that's these guys, would you use to measure the length of a rowboat? Now, a rowboat, we're not talking about something that's going to go in your bathtub. We're talking about something like, I know Harlan likes to go fishing. I don't know if he and his dad have a rowboat. Um, but it would probably make sense to measure either with a yardstick or a meter stick. Personally, I would get out my tape measure because I don't like yardsticks and meter sticks, but that's my personal preference. Okay, number 18, Alexander is thinking of two whole numbers. So a whole number is um, like zero and above. The product of the two whole numbers is 28. Their difference is three. What are the numbers? So I need to think of things that could multiply to be 28. Well, two times 14 equals 28. So that's the first clue. Now I got to look at my second clue. Uh, my second clue is the difference between them. So 14 minus 2, but that's 12. So that's not going to work. So 2 and 14 are not my numbers. Okay, well, what else can I multiply to be 28? Is 3 times anything 28? No because the closest I get on that is three times nine is 27. Okay, how about four? So double the two, half the 14, half of 14 is seven, okay. So now I have to find the difference of those numbers. So that would be seven take away four equals, ooh, I think we found it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight the one I want to keep. Where's my highlight? There we go. Here, I'm highlight. Oh, what color do I feel like? I love purple, but let's go with pink. So what are the numbers? My, oh, it's still highlighted. Numbers are 4 and 7. Okay, I had a little too much fun with the highlighter there. Mary has three, I thought it said cats, <laughs> hats, four scarves, and two pairs of gloves. How many different choices of one hat, one scarf, and one pair of gloves does she have? So this one you might be going, oh my God, this looks terrible. But it's actually, it's just multiplication. So there's three hat choices hats times four scarves times, did I spell it right? Yeah, two gloves. Equals, so three times four is at that number, then you're going to multiply that times two, and it's a two digit number and it's even. And then say choices. Oh, stretch that way out. There we go. Number 20 Anna displayed eight paintings in each of four rows. 
It's not saying she has eight paintings in each row. Anna displayed eight paintings in each of four rows. Which equation could not be used to find how many paintings she displayed in all? Oh, well, three of them are part of a fact family. So you just need, well, no, one of them's not really part of a multiplication division fact family. So one, this is one of the ones you wanna keep. Don't throw that guy away. And then look carefully at A, B, and C. One of those is the one that doesn't work. Okay, 21. There are 250 horses entered in a show. All but 95 are jumpers. How many jumpers are entered? So you want to do 250 minus 95. Okay, let me underline that, control U, here we go. So I would need to borrow here, make that a 10. 10 take away five is, now remember I borrowed from the five next door, so that actually becomes a four. I can't do nine from four, so I gotta go next door to the two, I'm gonna borrow from it, it's gonna become a one. Now the four that's in the tens place is now 14. 14 take away nine is, hopefully you were thinking you put that down and then you have a one in your hundreds place that you need to bring down. Okay, let's go look at your quick check. So what you could do is have a piece of paper out and jot down little notes on the quick check as I'm going through it, and then just pull it up tomorrow and write down, select the answers that you just decided now. Okay, Ramon wants to measure the area of the front door of his house. Which measurement unit should he use? So think of your front door, it's pretty good size. Would you measure it in square centimeters? So that's gonna be, the top of your pinky. Would you measure it in square inches? That's gonna be a little bit bigger than the top of your thumb. Would you measure it in square meters? So that's more like my dog bed. Or would you measure it in square miles? That's more like the area of the orchard. Number two, Kim wants to measure a picture frame to find its area. Which measurement tool should she use? Okay, I'm gonna pause the video because my daughter is calling me. Okay, I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. Bree had a question. She went to um, Lowe's for me. Kim wants to measure a picture frame to find its area. Which measurement tool should she use? So picture frame, so I'm gonna rotate my thing and show you a picture on the wall. Okay, so see we got a couple pictures over there. One right there and one whoo, right there. So what could I use my inch ruler to measure those picture frames? Could I use a meter stick? Um one of them that I've got up there, I might be able to use a meter stick, but it's probably shorter than my meter stick. The smaller one is definitely smaller than a meter stick. Now a scale, a scale is something you stand on to see how heavy you are, or your parents might have a food scale. Like I, I put my meat on the scale to make sure it's the right um, weight. A yardstick. Now remember, a yardstick is like three of these. So if you had a really huge picture frame, you could go with meter stick or yardstick. I think they want you to go with the smaller unit. Okay. But if I'm wrong, if you get it wrong, I'm sorry. Okay. 
which of the following would you use, would you measure in square feet? So that would be like one of these by one of these, so a square foot. So something about the size of this, this is about a square foot. Would you measure the area of a large city? So do you think you'd measure like Tacoma or Seattle in things this size? Uh, the area of a CD, you may not know what a CD is. Um, it's like a DVD, it's a round thing, I like about this big. The area of a postcard. So a postcard, some of you might have gotten postcards from like Mrs. Uniskevich, and I know the ladies from the office, one of them sent me a postcard. It's a little bit bigger than my cell phone. The area of a large rug. Um, so you have to think, what would you measure with square feet? Only one of those is a good choice. Which measurement tool, so remember tools, are best for measuring the area of a gym floor? So you have to think back to the video. In the video, they gave us the answer to this one. Could you, should you use a meter stick? That's like three of these long. Should you use an inch ruler? Be a lot of these things. Should you use a scale? That's something that you stand on to see how much, how heavy you are. Or should you use the centimeter side of a ruler? Would that be an efficient way to measure the gym floor's area? Valentina wants to measure the area of her town. So that's like, let's go measure Port Orchard. Which measurement unit should she use? Square centimeters. So that would be little itty bitty guys, because right there is one centimeter. Square inches. Still pretty little. Square meters, that's like the size of my dog bed. Or square miles. Only one of those is a good choice. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember, I like 80s and I like 100s. Don't so much like the 60s and below because you didn't listen to my hints and you just did it without watching the video. That is a pet peeve of mine. Okay, so we are going to stop the share. So I hope you understand a little bit more about using tools to measure area and the types of um, things that you could measure with different things and what units you would use. So um, tomorrow you have a review and then the day after that we're doing a review and then the following week we're going to do the math test. So if there's any lessons that you skipped, Time to go back and do some review so that your test is not ugly in a few days. Hope you're having a great day and don't forget to get outside and get some fresh air.